All right, let's go ahead and, and verify the scenario, ba basically put it to the test. So we, we uh, define that we're gonna be doing everything as Fred Thomas. As always, we're gonna start with the things that we're not supposed to do. So we decided that this role is not going to allow the user to be able to um, log in locally or through the console, through the machine. So uh, it's, uh, it's basically on engineering six and member two. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to member two and uh, let's try and do a local login. So I'm gonna switch here. And you will see that, uh, you know, we're gonna get the message that the account is not authorized to log in from this machine, from this station, okay? So we've verified that the user is unable to log in through the Windows console of the machine. Now let's, uh, let's go to the unit console. Let's take a look. So user again, notice that it's prompting for the AD password. And the user got a quick, uh, you're not authorized to be able to log in. Okay, so we verified that the user is unable to do, uh, from a ter in terms of access, is unable to access the way we did not define him to access. Now let's take a look and let's go ahead and access uh, first, let's do it through uh, the Unix, uh, Unix side. And um, let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and open this and we're going to launch a session to the server. In this case, we are logging in um, through SSH and the user had the, the, the ability to log in. So privilege elevation with Centrify is performed with easy do, but first you may want to see what are the roles and rights that I have available to me. And easy info is the command that shows you that. So in here, uh, what we can see is that the user has um, the mixed DBA role plus another one, and this allows him to log in through SSH and to run these commands. I can take a look at um, more specifically at what commands I can run by using the dzdo minus l command. Notice that I'm being authenticated because this is a privilege action to be able to see what somebody can execute. So notice that I can I can uh, definitely um, you know manipulate the um, uh, this Oracle service run SQL service, uh, SQL plus as Oracle and as your Oracle. Let's take it for a ride. Let's do, let's do what the easy do as the Oracle. And there you go, now I'm Oracle. Let's, let's go ahead and do um, SQL plus as Oracle. So it would be DZ do um, SU, uh, and now it's actually it would be minus U Oracle, and then SQL plus. And there you go. Not much to do here, not an Oracle guy. Um, finally, let's go ahead and do, maybe restart the SQL Server service. So DZ do service uh, Oracle dash XE restart. All right, so it's shutting down the service. Uh, let's take a look at, um, I'm gonna go here with Diana actually as root. I'm gonna take a look at the um, uh, the secure log. So. Notice that all the elevation that I performed, um, like when I even opened, um, you know, the the DSU dash, everything is here. So notice this is me running as Oracle SQL Plus. This is me running uh, the restart of the Oracle service and some other stuff that happened when, when it logged. So from a security operations perspective, everything is being sent to syslog. Now, if I need to take a look at, um, uh, you know, what happened in the system from a, uh, from a capture replay capability, I have the ability also to use direct audit and Direct Audit is part of, of uh, Centrify Enterprise Edition. And what Direct Audit shows you is 
here it shows you a collection of queries, but notice that it's saying here, Fred Thomas is on Engineering 6, started a session just shortly ago, and it hasn't finished, still in progress. So what that allows me to, to, to do is to either take a look at the index command list and you know look at exactly what the user has been doing, and this is pretty much what we've been doing. I can replay it as a movie, and this constitutes a detective control that allows you to reconstruct this information in a more efficient way, more efficiently than what, what a log would allow you to do. So uh, customers love this type of capability. Not, not much to be done here because there wasn't anything exciting. However, remember the problem that I outlined in video one? If I go and take a look at Diana's session here, notice that it does have the command in which I elevated to, uh, to become root but I can replay from any point and whatever she did when she became root is gonna become visible, effectively overcoming the problem with uh, a, a logs today and in the case of a root account. So notice that I was trying to log in in here and this is when the user went and changed something on the, um, on the Etsy password file, basically deleting a line so you can continue to keep track of the user and we know exactly who elevated at the time. The difference is this system works peer to peer. So there's no individual or intermediate system that is required. So you can enforce access, enforce auditing in a end to end perspective. Now let's take a look at Windows. So notice that our user was not able to log in um, using um, uh, the local the local system, so I'm gonna do a um, let's let's do an RDP session, and this will be a minus V member two minus S. Okay, so we're gonna switch in here, and we're gonna make it uh, Fred. We should need to type the right password. And in here, we will be able to perform a connection to the server. We weren't able to do it through the console. So I'm going through the, the whole setup of the session here. And what were the things that we allowed the user to do? One is to launch SQL Server Manager. If I go and I launch SQL Server Manager, mm -hmm. normally, I'm gonna get the equivalent of like an access denied, if we look at that service as an access denied. So, the first thing I can do is take a look at what are my uh, my privileges. So I can look at the Centrify tray, and the Centrify tray is going to show me, hey, you know, this user is not allowed to log in through the console. However, remotely, it does have the chance to do that. The roles that he has effective is the mixed DBA role, which was assigned at the level of the DB servers. The role is defined as this, but I can take a look. Notice that it says that it's available at any time. And this are the rights that I can use. One of them is um, you know, SQL Server, DBA, and one of them is SQL Server Management. So the only thing that I need to do is uh, elevate. And I have the ability to elevate through the shell by right-clicking and selecting Running as Role. I can have multiple roles. In this case, I only have one. So I'm going to press OK. And this now will allow me to log in through the SQL Server service. But one key thing is happening right now. And it's that if I look at the agent, you will see that it's saying that it's being audited. So everything I'm doing in this session is being audited by direct audit. Same thing with command applications. I can, um, you know, I have the ability to take a look at, and there's several ways to do this. I, I like to do it with the SC, so we can show that there's command line capabilities. I can take a look at the status of the SQL Server service, and notice that it says that it's running. I can go ahead and stop the SQL Server service if I want. Uh, if I were to do it normally, I am going to get access denied because um, you know I don't have the rights to do it. I'm not a local administrator. If I look in here, notice that I don't have the rights to do that. However, if I do the privilege elevation, actually, you know, I should just uh, um, do it this way, and then I take a look at 
the status of the service, I actually stopped the service before. Now notice that it stopped. If I want to start it, all I need to do is run as role for the right one. And it's going to go ahead and start it. And if I look at the, and if I go ahead and query it again, I should be able to see that it's, you know, start pending at, at, at some point it's gonna be running. So that means that we have additional methods for privilege elevation other than the virtual desktop that we showed you before. And if we look at the event log, all the actions that I performed are going to be re uh, recorded in the event log. So if I look at the application log and look at the events with the centerfy name on it, I should be able to see all those, those instances of privilege elevation. A lot of SQL Server here because I started it, but let's take a look. Notice in here where it says um, centerfy audit trail. So I launched the sc.exe to start SQL Server as myself and is running as Fred Thomas right here. What that does makes security operations very happy. If I go back to my original system, and I'm gonna go ahead and close this session here. And I need to see what is the status from a direct audit perspective. I can do a refresh and notice that there is a session that was just started a few minutes before that uh, has been completed because I closed it. If I want to, to go ahead and look at the indexes, let's go ahead and do a refresh. Refresh, let's take a look at uh, start time. So when I look at um, the events, let's take a look in here. If I look at Fred Thomas, and this is the session here that I had. Look. Let's do a refresh. Fred Thomas. Let's take a look at a replay here. This is actually not the same session here. Let's take a look. This was from member three. I'm looking at a session from member three and uh, this is not the actual session that I was uh, looking at before but what we want to do is illustrate that um, you know we have the ability to capture and replay also Windows events and reproduce them so this is way beyond any other capabilities available um, you know, from uh, you know, from a single solution that allows you to do all that together in conjunction with Active Directory. So, um, you know, maybe I gotta refresh a few times here, but this is the good thing. We do these demos, we do these um, videos in real time, so you can see everything at work.